So how much do you know about BDSM? Um, not, I'm not sure. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do another movie review. It's one of the movies that you kind of, you know, people kind of talk about it, suggest it to you, but you kind of delay uh, watching it because honestly I'm really not into romantic comedies and stuff like that, romantic stories altogether. Like there's rare ones that I really, really fancy and I must admit this is one of them. So the movie that I will be talking about, it's called Two in the Bush. Uh, a love story. Are you familiar with CBT? Mm. NT? GS? Mm. AW? Mm. FF? Mm. Pegging? Oh, yes, pegging! <laughs> I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> okay, good. I can teach you the rest. And if you Google it, uh, you can see it has like five out of ten. Uh, so it's kind of one of the movies, you know, when you when you check out the review, you're like, ah, uh, should I watch it or shouldn't I? But I think it's a really lovely story, and I definitely think that you should watch it. Um, I would also say it, it's a really great movie, and it's revolutional in many ways. Um, it's a love story, it's a romantic story, but also a completely unconventional one. Um, if you google the three main actors, you may see that they're not really, you know, like super famous actors, like they don't have all that many movies behind them. So, uh, but from what I can see, from what I can say, it's with the little experience I have, they did an outstanding job. And just to keep that in mind that, you know, these are not the blockbuster, you know, famous American. <laughs> actors um, and one of the actresses actually I think that was her like first real movie so you may spot like a scene or two where maybe acting could have been better but it's not a disaster it's not like one of those you know like cheap horror movies when you're like oh my god what is this so it's I can't say it's it's bad it's good it's good acting there and um, honestly I have I have seen I'm just gonna repeat that I've seen more flaws in uh, some of the major blockbuster movies. Um, it also, the way it's revolutional, it introduces us into the world of kink, BDSM, polyamory or open relationships, uh, trans and sex work, which is, uh, I, I love how they manage to squeeze all these things into one hour and 37 minutes. I mean, that's really an outstanding job, you know, to put all these kind of things in, in, in one uh, thing and, and, and kind of, you know, put it in, in a love story. Um, if you're an open-minded individual, uh, I, you're probably gonna enjoy it a lot. If you're someone new to this, you might love it or you might hate it. It's uh, kind of, you know, like... And I, I know like the movies like this are, are not a big thing uh, already and I'm surprised that they are not because I see in America like polyamory is becoming largely popular and it, it, it is a thing. I'm a member of a couple of like Facebook polyamory groups and they hold like thousands of thousands of people so there is an audience for this kind of uh, uh, movies but I think the world is kind of not happy or ready for it. Um, if you haven't watched the movie, I suggest you stop here and don't watch the movie and then come back to me because I'm gonna be uh, giving you major spoilers from now on. So if you haven't, stop, go watch it and just uh, play again. Um, so movie opens with two girls in the bed uh, <laughs> sleeping back to back and uh, showing us the main protagonist, Emily, and and a peak in her everyday life. So basically, she has a girlfriend. She, uh, you find out like very soon that she's bisexual, not and not uh, gay. And uh, she has a steady job with a boss that's annoying. You know, she's uh, uh, very nice to him. She seems kind of like very submissive. You know, she's not very fighting for her way uh, in life. And people are kind of getting the best of her. And. Um, her her boss is a really major asshole and it shows you one of those you know like um, people that kind of are worried about things in the world but you know they forget how to uh, how to take care of the people around them <laughs> basically you know they worry about the things like they're somewhere um, 
like thousands and thousands of kilometers away, but they forget how to treat, you know, their closest ones as, as human beings. So uh, she comes back home with, with Chinese takeaway. And she finds out that her girlfriend is actually cheating on her with their best, her best friend, I think. And, you know, she finds them in the bed. And here we can already see like a pinch of BDSM because he's all tied up and he can't really uh, get himself free. And, you know, like she gets, uh, she, she even like she's so nice that she wanted to try out the therapy with her girlfriend, but her girlfriend basically uh, dumps her. And, you know, she's forced to move out of the house because the lease was on her name. And she, you know, like she doesn't know what to do. And basically, like she remembers um, this friend of hers. And I love her, like Rosa. Rosa is amazing. Like everybody should have a friend like Rosa. <laughs> she is one of them people that are so, so there for you, you know, uh, up to the point. She's so patient and so magnificent with Emily. And I think basically she is the reason behind her success. Like you, later we can say that it was someone else, but I think Rosa was there when she really, really, really needed her. And then her life gets even worse because her boss has this crazy idea that he's gonna go and make a, a documentary. Um, I forgot where, it doesn't matter, somewhere. And uh, she basically uh, gets sent home and, and now she has lost her girlfriend and she has lost her job. So she's basically really, really uh, depressed and she's caught in this never ending cycle of self-pity and depression. And uh, here Rosa literally jumps in and sends her uh, to a job interview because, you know, she's taking too much time. Like she, because she's hurt and because she kind of faced this failure, she becomes like too careful with life. You know, like she, she's too scared to actually go back um, and look for a girlfriend or to look for a job. You know, she's, she's kind of like sitting on the couch, uh, drinking and eating and that's all she's doing. And the job interview is actually uh, for a personal assistant to a domina and uh, in a BDSM dungeon, <laughs> and which I found so cute. So basically she goes there and meets Nikki and she's, she's a really attractive domina, like she's gorgeous. I can't really emphasize how much I love her character up to the point where I actually googled the actress herself and uh, I kind of spied on her a little bit. And uh, I, I can say that she's really gorgeous in real, li real life as she is in the movie as well. And I love how they didn't make her um, too dominant in the romantic relationship. Like basically, you know, she has her job, but like outside that she can be other things other than just, you know, domina. And um, in, the, in the romantic relationship, it's actually really caring, really soft, really understanding. And I think that is one of the best things a dom or a domina can be, you know, like really, really supportive. That's what we all dream about. Not someone who has a really tough right hand to spank you with. So very soon they start liking each other, uh, Emily and Nikki. And, but also another character pops up and that is Ben. Ben is like this artistic type and they meet because he comes into the dungeon to fix the toilet and funny enough the butt plug is, was, was uh, stuck in the toilet and I don't know, you, you can feel the chemistry straight away between them. And uh, but basically like they also develop this kind of romantic relationship and later on through Rosa she finds out that Ben and Nikki are actually in a relationship. And, you know, this is way too much for her. I actually knew that uh, Ben and Nikki were together before in a movie, like, it actually happened. Because I was thinking, like, why would he be there unplugging the toilet and putting up the painting the next day? You know, they must have been something to each other. And basically, like, when Emily finds out, um, you know, like, let's be clear now. I'm glad that they didn't make her accept it straight away because, like, you know, if you're coming from a vanilla background, if you've never been in an open relationship, you can't really, you know, like, you can't really take it that much in, in the beginning. I think it's just the way we struggle, the way we have been raised, and the way that society is functioning, and it's just not easy for us to switch straight away. So I love it the way she kind of backed out of it, you know, because it does make sense in reality. And I absolutely love how they made 
both Nikki and Ben be so supportive towards her, so supportive that she actually felt like she wants to come back to them. So she kind of, you know, like starts dating other people, just, you know, she, she kind of backed out after that uh, relationship. And I love how my fiance popped into the right room when I was watching the movie, because I was laughing so hard. And that was the part where I was laughing so hard. It's so all these people that she's meeting through the dating app, because I can actually feel that as well. And, um, you know, like, uh, he, he, my, my fiance said, like, wasn't this a romance? And I was like, no, but it's just really funny, especially the scene where the cat is coughing off uh, the fur and she's trying to make out with this uh, with this guy. And, um, and I have to say, I had my share of people like this, like all these weird things, you know, like, you kind of feel like, okay, this is traditional dating, but it's not working out for me. It was better for me when I was actually dating a couple. Um, so now, like, after that point where she starts dating them, and then they have this fight where she backs out of the relationship again. Um, and when, when she actually achieves her life goal where she wants to be a movie director, you know, so she starts moving into that direction after she broke up with them for the second time. <laughs> Um, I kind of had a feeling that the movie didn't have time to develop, like it developed too fast. Okay, I could see them liking each other, but it kind of felt wrong and it kind of sounded like really cheesy how they, you know, from the point where they kind of dated each other for a short time and then they got into the, this fight, they weren't together for a while and then all of a sudden, you know, at the end of the movie they started living together. But the budget was probably too small to make a movie like that was two hours or over two hours uh, long but it would make justice to the movie and I kind of feel like the movie needed it um, anyways with all that said I think it was a brilliant movie I actually watched it twice the same day and um, it's telling us that love and that love has no boundaries and it shouldn't have and that other people in society shouldn't tell us how we should live our lives like we have to find our pair of shoes that fits us and just keep on wearing it and you know like i think it's good for the world uh, for these kinds of things to be introduced and like for the larger part of society to see it and to make their own decisions of how they want their love life to look like and that it doesn't have to be just one thing. It can be so many things, so many things. And in this movie, like you can see that freedom of love moving any way that it can go. So basically, if you guys watch this movie, if you're planning to watch it, if you just watched it, uh, tell me what you think. I think it was brilliant. And, uh, and just write it down in the comments. I'll be happy to check out what you think. Thank you guys for watching this video and I hope to see you very soon. Bye bye.